Hi, I'm Kelly Hayes Gilpin, the Curator of Anthropology here at the Museum of Northern Arizona. And we're going to take a very special little look at part of the Liberating Landscape exhibition, Women Artists in Northern Arizona, 1900 to 1940. I'm going to introduce you to a Hopi Tewa potter named Nampeo, who was born in 1860 and lived a, a long and productive life collaborating with other artists, including one of our founders, Mary Russell Farrell Colton. So Nampeo was born in 1860, and by the age of 16, she was already a master potter, living on First Mesa, on the Hopi Mesas, using local materials to make beautiful pottery. It's all hand-built. There's no potter's wheel used. She would just gather local clay and grind it and process it and then coil and scrape it thin and polish with a smooth stone. Then she would paint it with mineral paints that are found in the area and fire it outside using sheep dung and a little bit of coal as fuel. So these beautiful pots are all hand built from local materials on the Hopi mesas. So a lot of the designs you see here you would find on ancient potsherds in the sites around the Hopi mesas. So we have little dragonfly designs and eagle feathers, bird tails, the four directions, um, symbols that mean migration, colors that refer to the natural colors of the landscape on the Hopi mesas. So she was innovative, she was creative, she was hardworking, and very open um, with her with sharing her work with the world. Now Peo made this beautiful jar when she was about 52 years old. So she was. Um, a master potter by the time she was 16. And by 1912, when this was made, you can see how precise her line work is, how beautifully designed this vessel is. And soon after this, by 1920, she had started to lose her eyesight and sometimes had family members paint for her. But what's really special about this pot to us at the Museum of Northern Arizona is Dr. Harold Colton, our founder, based our museum's logo on this design right here. So here's our logo on our, my jacket here and my name tag. And you can see the inspiration for that in this design. You have the three eagle feathers, the black-tipped eagle feathers here at the bottom. And then these two wing-like designs which Dr. Colton and his, his wife, the artist Mary Russell Farrell Colton, who's also featured in this exhibit today, made it a more circular layout um, so that it would work well as a, a logo. But this is the pot that they had on their mantelpiece that inspired them to design our logo. Now, Peo made this bull in about 1920 and this was a time period when Hopi potters were working with the art market. They were working with people who came to buy pottery um, when they came to visit as tourists on the railroad. They were working with traders. They were starting to work with museums and contemporary artists of that time who were involved in the American arts and crafts movement. So potters were encouraged to make decorative arts, maybe umbrella stands or flower pots. And this bowl has a couple little holes in it which would have been used for hanging it on the wall. In traditional Hopi society, pottery bowls were made for serving food, but this one was made for sale and just to be a decorative object but it still has a pretty traditional Hopi design that would have been based on designs that Nampeo would have seen in archeological sites that scientists were investigating around that time. It's a bird image with the, the wings, the tail, 
feathers, and then there's a face up at the top with some eyes and a mouth and nose. So this is kind of a combination of an eagle and the sun. So she's used traditional designs in an arts and crafts context made for sale. I want to recommend this book by my friend Barbara Kramer if you'd like to learn more about Nampeo's life. This is called Nampeo and Her Pottery by Barbara Kramer.